Hello, my name is Steve Stewart. I'm the founding consultant of Rick Consulting, and this is Rickopedia, your guide to children's services recruitment and retention, and this is chapter 9.2.2.7. Um, the DFE data, the National Workforce Statistics, I've angled them and I've broken them down, and I've created a set of regional snapshots, and this is the one for the southeast. If this is the first one of these that you've watched, I'm assuming you're from the southeast. Hello, nice to speak to you. Um, there's an introduction which might give you some kind of background and there's also every other region that you might want to do some comparing and contrasting with. Okay, but it's probably best if I just start and show you some of the data in case you don't want to watch the introduction. So the DFE put together all the data and um, I've made it a lot more presentable and searchable. But the figures that come from the DFE, they're the ones in black. Okay, however, while I love data and it is the basis of everything that I do, this data in itself doesn't actually show me anything you know I need to know trends and I need to know how these figures interact together so I use a series of measures um, which I include and they are here in these spreadsheets and they're green so anything that there's a ah, that's a figure that Steve's put together now I'm quite happy to share all of this with you okay so all of the data all of the mics are bits together and I'll share them all with you because that's fine okay so what does the southeast data tell me well, it tells me that you are big, very big. So you've got fours at the start of these figures here in terms of your social worker full-time equivalent, um, and that's big numbers. Similarly, your number of vacancies, they're big, yeah? So you've got presently 1,064 uh, vacancies, um, but you have a big usage of agency staff, and also you have got big numbers of leaders, okay? So you're big. Um, there are some very very positive signs here from a regional perspective obviously there might be some individual bits of data that you need to go and work out but okay but what the, the narrative of this is that the number of social workers that you have is basically increasing year by year up until the time that covid hit and then it's level there okay but your numbers of leavers they were increasing slightly which you'd expect because you have more people there you have more people leave you know that's standard if you do nothing to address it and then you see a dip and again this was something that we predicted uh, and we detailed previously in terms of um, the pandemic when we also said to you though is that don't expect this to be um, maintained these people are not deciding not to leave they're purely deferring their decision to leave and that's shown by there and that <laughs> increase that's gone Okay. However, your vacancies have therefore gone up as well, but your vacancy increased year by year. Okay, so I'm using some of my figures now, as you can see here. Ignore the bottom in terms of increase, because it presumes that 2016 you had no vacancies, which is not true. Is that your vacancy increase was relatively small? Yeah, and in actual fact, decreased there, and then you got this big figure at the bottom, which is exacerbated obviously by your number of leaders. But what you have found is that you've had agency staff that have sort of made up an awful lot of the shortfall in your workforce, which you may not think is a good thing, yeah? But in actual fact, it is one of our key measures because one of our key measures is your overall shortfall of resources within the region. And what this kind of shows is, is that if you take your number of vacancies and your number of vacancy staff, if you can get more agency staff, that's a supply issue, yeah? But if you've got as many agency staff as you want, then in actual fact is that you have got an oversupply of resource or available resource within the region, which is not the case everywhere. So in actual fact, you can see that your overall shortfall dipped considerably, and in 2020 is that you had an overall shortfall of minus 122, you had more agency staff than you had vacancies, which might raise a question of, is everyone's establishment correct? But if it is, then that's fine, but that's decrease. And that might be actually here, is that is that 1003, is that budgetary, or is it the fact that you just can't get them? Yeah, and they are two very, very different situations. They can both be negative, but they're two different situations that need different solutions. So. Then we come to these figures here, which are the same, but they also include your establishment. And what you can see is here, is that although your vacancy increase was high, yeah, it's not as near as high as your establishment increase. So in actual fact is that you were recruiting, you had a net recruitment increase, although this vacancy increase is there and significant, your actual number of social workers were going up as we knew because you were getting more in. So your recruitment actually 
was effective. It might not be effective as we wanted it to be, but it was effective. Because it, not only was it able to achieve, nearly achieving that, that was on top of your number of levers. Yeah? So you were recruiting big volumes of social workers during that kind of time as well. Okay. So how do we take these figures forward and how do we use them in terms of creating targets, effectively, or to try and extrapolate what needed to be? So there's a couple of figures, and the first set of figures is really scary. The second one's even more scary. And then we come on to something that's a little less scary. Okay, so basically, the first figure is appointments to be made in 2023. And this is the number of figures that you would need to uh, recruit, yeah, number of starters that you would need to have, with every other figure staying the same, as to move your vacancies to zero. And effectively, that is your number of levers, 153.1, if that was the same going forward to this year, and your number of vacancies was the same as well. Add them together, you can with 1,917.9. If those figures remain the same, all of a sudden you'd have zero vacancies, but you've had to recruit that many. Now, if you stick on your establishment increase, if your establishment went up by 254 again next year, then that figure increases to 2,172.4, which is a lot. Yeah, it's a lot, even for a big area with a lot of local authorities, with big departments, that's a lot of appointments. However, I've got a figure that's actually a lot more manageable, one that takes into account a much wider scope, and that scope is national. Every region I've put together what I've called your minimum shared requirements, and that is the minimum number of social workers that you will need to re recruit. Again, assuming that stay the same to get your overall shortfall figure to zero and your minimum shared requirement is 914 and if everyone did that across the country the overall shortfall of workers is zero and that addresses an awful lot of the situations that creates market dynamics that allow for greater control it allows for greater MOU compliance yeah and greater management and that reduces churn which is one of the unexpected consequences of properly administered MOUs, and that creates a situation as well where accelerated recruitment activity will lead to a reduction in the number of agency staff. Okay. One of the figures to include then, which is sort of a mitigation against that positivity, <laughs> yeah, is that you've got the equivalent of 137 people being absent on any single daily basis, which might be a further demand for social workers. Okay, that's not necessarily been met by normal sources. So. How do we use that and how do we come up with some recommendations? Well, the recommendations are is that you need to have increased data, graphic, data gathering into your permanent workforce and departures. You might already have that, yeah. But in terms of putting together data sets that actually kind of monitor levers and whatever across everything and they can be monitored and put together effectively, that will show movements and directions of travel. You need to have an increased focus on retention of staff as well. And I've also suggested the creation of entry interviews so that with that sheer volume that you're going to need to do, you're going to want to know why you're attractive. Yeah. And the creation of entry interviews are kind of things that you might have might be beneficial. And recruitment investment should focus on extra sources of staff. Is that rather than recruiting all your workers from each other, you need to start thinking about how you can track people into the region and possibly even into the country as well. I think that you're almost, you're the only area that I've actually suggested those kind of things from. But there are alternative recommendations that come up over and over again, which is not easy to say. But of social work professionals that you might want to have in your team that you might want to have in your team that you might want to have there. And you need to increase your workforce and recruitment agility. You need to have the ability to adapt to different situations, be that on a contingent or on a permanent staff basis. And also with the number of staff that you've got, is that what can you do to increase flexibility within that workforce? There's an awful lot of things and activities around career progression that could really tessellate really well. You've got fantastic opportunities there. Uh, and I'd love to speak to you about them. Um, if you want to speak to me, is a, if you want to follow what we're doing in terms of Wikipedia, which is a whole guide that's been put together episodically so people can learn the whole basis of recruitment and retention from in all different areas for children's services, you can follow that on Twitter at Wikipedia and you can contact me on
Uh, read my reviews. They were great. Um, web address for the Brick Consulting, Brick.Consulting. And if you'll email me directly, Steve at uh, Brick.Consulting. And like, subscribe, and comment on this video. It does help. And that would be fantastic. Um, another one. Is it okay if I just read this one? Yeah, it's okay. Great. Um, if not, though, um, my name's been Steve Stewart. I've been calling from Brick Consulting, and I wish you good luck in all of your endeavours. Take care. Bye-bye.